Hello everybody, welcome back to Law Hero. My name is Jen and if you're not already like <laughs> you don't to like you don't to like it yet because I haven't said anything but if you're not already subscribed please subscribe to my channel because I talk about law among other things and uh well no it's basically law. Um and today I'm gonna to talk about the king of law because there actually is a king of law. I like to think of myself as the queen of law. But this man is definitely the king of law and it's Professor uh, Richard Susskind. I have been a long time admirer and um, advocate of what he says. I agree wholeheartedly with his views. If you want to check out his website it's uh, richardsuskind.com. Uh, not sponsored. <laughs> But he's amazing and yeah, so uh, my love affair with Richard started uh, when I was in, uh, I think, first year in university when my mom gave me one of his books called uh, Tomorrow's Lawyers uh, in my stocking at Christmas time. This video will look briefly um, at the future of courts. Now, just to preface this video, I am not a litigator. I am not somebody who is in and out of court all the time. Um, but in the eyes of the public, the courts are the physical emanation of justice. That is where justice is done or is seen to be done. And um, justice should be done in public. Um, as Article 34.1 of the Irish Constitution mandates. However, with COVID, there hasn't been much going on down at the courts. A lot of it has been done by video. And Mr. Richard, or Professor Suskind, has written a wonderful article. I'm just going to summarise, so, now it's a rather long article, so I'm just going to summarise some of the things um, he points out. So he says that there are three major challenges uh, facing the court system as we know it. The first is that we're, we're struggling at trying to maintain um, a sufficient level of service when the traditional courts are closed and um, that's, that's worldwide. The second challenge comes from the first in that every court in the world has a backlog of cases. It's just the nature of it. Cases are long, they need to be heard, two sides need to be heard, which is the principle of audi alterum partem. And um, it's very hard for justice system to cope with this. Um, there is like this handy table you can go to. Um, I believe I did it when I was living in Germany because I couldn't believe how quick it was to get a summons out and to sue essentially for you know minor minor stuff I guess what we would consider district court level stuff in Ireland um, whereas here um, you're talking months if not even a year sometimes depending on uh, what district court circuit you're in in Ireland. Some of them are busier than others. Obviously in Dublin things are chock-a-block. Down the country things are a bit quieter and um, just due to population demands but I think Germany is up at the top or maybe maybe it's the Netherlands and Germany and Belgium I think. They share um, they share the top most efficient court systems uh, or justice systems um, in in Europe and then I think Ireland is one of the very last just so you know but I think he quotes like a crazy figure for Brazil I think he's talking about millions so we're not as bad as Brazil the third challenge um, he says is that disputes take too long and I think I've already kind of said this um, it's just because of the adversarial nature of cases he kind of points the fingers at lawyers. He says lawyers should be ashamed of themselves because they're too vain and it's all about racking up fees and it's all about having your, your say in court and it's all about being pompous and having the other your other opponents, your professional opponents, um, see you perform and it's all at the detriment of the client and you know to be honest as somebody who has gone to court completely unbiased and just watched uh, I would have to agree with him uh, to an extent a lot of the time uh, the client's interests 
in my opinion, and this is his opinion as well, aren't really front and center. It's a little bit about the show. So of course, because we have moved to this digital kind of uh, necessity because of the COVID-19 thing, um, he is looking here at, um, can technology actually be used to increase the efficiency of the court system. Now, normally when we talk about legal tech or technology and law, we talk about automation of certain processes. Um, and normally and traditionally, this has been in contract management, due diligence, um, kind of transforming very basic legal processes, which are things that humans could do in their sleep, it's much much easier just to let a technological process um, do that. However, court is a little bit different because it's a very people heavy environment. But Suskind argues that we're we are the problem. Um, that we're the ones holding up this um, innovation because there is an interest in keeping things um, long and inefficient like in any profession. So the next question is, so what have we learned since March? And um, Professor Suskind um, has a global view of what's going on because he's involved in uh, working groups in lots of different countries. And what he has said is that um, the belief that society has that, that lawyers are very conservative and um, are unwilling to change is not true because Otherwise, the justice system would have collapsed if everyone had just decided, no, we're not doing uh, court at all. Uh, there was a necessity to go online. So that has been pushed to one side. People acted accordingly. Um, and he notes as well, that there are lot, lots of judges. Some of them had their camera on, some of them had their camera off. It's the same for uh, barristers and solicitors, but people did weigh in. So that's that that has dispelled that belief. Now, the next thing he says is the challenges and the difficulties around online courts. And he does note that for very, that well, not very elderly, but for elderly and young people, it's certainly not um, ideal. And he also notes those with a poor internet connection. And these are all things you must uh, bear in mind when you're conducting um, proceedings online. Very, very interestingly, he notes that video hearings are now more tiring than physical hearings and that more breaks are needed when convening by video. Um, also, he notes it is difficult to handle large volumes of documents if only one screen is available. And also, um, this is an issue if the court is very much uh, paper-based. If the court had not already moved to uh, PDFs and screens and documents being lodged via an online system, uh, they were the ones that seems to have struggled more. Now, the areas of contention, he notes, are credibility of witnesses and whether this can be assessed in a video hearing. And this is the bit I find most interesting. Some say you need to be in the same room as humans to determine whether they are speaking the truth. Others insist that you can still look people in the eye when interacting remotely. And I, I, I really do believe this. I conduct a lot of um, Skype, uh, Skype and Zoom um, calls with trainees. And, you know, sometimes I give them negative feedback and I can immediately see their body language stiffen or you know they look to the ground. So I definitely do think you can, we humans, we are quite sophisticated and we do pick up on body language over a camera. Um, I, I do think that is true. The other very interesting thing he points out is the majesty of the court in that, um, you know, in growing up and, in the media and you know as children we're also oh, court like court is a scary place court is like people who wear black and they have wigs and there's a certain amount of grandeur that goes along with a court you know those people are the deciders it's them and us and that creates a certain kind of dichotomy in people's minds in that 
when they go to court they behave in a certain way and you know you see some people even though they're you know they're very good at lying outside of court they're not able to lie in front of a judge or they're not able to lie in front of a really good um you know a barrister who's asking them questions so a lot of people have expressed concern around that but again as we know a video really is no bar to that it's just that it, as in you know like the church or the court it just takes the it does take grandeur out of it but i don't think and neither does he that this is necessarily a bad thing in most countries as well cases of serious crime um, they have still retained their physical hearing and actually um, he gives one exception of the Lagos High Court in Nigeria where a virtual judgment was given that somebody be hung by the neck which is really really awful. On a lighter note he does say that certain types of disputes are easily done remotely you know for example like small small issues that are very kind of procedural that you're only going to court to tick a box like he says um interlocutory interlocutory hearing routine family work minor uh, criminal offenses commercial disputes admin administrative tribunals uh civil appeals things like that and then he said that there is kind of you know an argument around oh well is my is my issue not good enough for a physical hearing is that the issue and what's happening is those kind of cases are being dampened down but again i think this is important i think uh, only in, in my opinion only the most serious um serious of offenses and um you know issues should be tried in court anyway um you know as solicitors we um as part of our uh, practice and guidance from the Law Society, um, we are advised to steer our clients away from court and settle outside of court to try and free up some space in the justice system. We're advised to um, you know, direct them towards arbitration and mediation before they consider uh, going yeah. to court. The other really interesting area which he touches upon is trial by jury and having jury go remotely. Now a lot of people have said that this is a terrible idea because there's certain, you know, like chemistry that people get when they're on a jury together. You have, you know, group think, you have um, shared consciousness and it's a very very special thing in fact um, he puts in a lovely quote here trial by jury is from lord devlin trial by jury is more than an instrument of justice and more than one wheel of the constitution it is the lamp that shows that freedom lives so yeah i mean you're being judged by your fellow man or woman um and yeah there is no higher authority it's just you and your kind he looks at the concept of justice. Are the courts actually fulfilling the mandate of uh, justice being done if they go online? So um, there is a so-called justice test, which is made up of seven elements. And that is which he, uh, by which he tests the court system. So there is substantive justice, which means fair decisions, that there is fair process, which is procedural justice, uh, there is transparency, which is open justice, distributive justice, which means accessibility, proportionate justice, which means justice that uh, reaches an appropriate balance, enforceable justice means that the state backs up what the court says, and sustainable justice in that there's sufficient resources and consistency in doing justice. So, um, a lot of people have said that on the whole remote courts have fulfilled this mandate of the seven um, types of justice. I think he's a fascinating guy. Uh, I love his ideas. Um, I think he really does want law um, to be brought to the people in a more fair, open and transparent way. And I agree with him. I'm totally on board with that. I think for long enough law was locked up behind closed doors and is expensive and inaccessible to people and i think we all need to do our part to get it out there and share it so if you like this video please like and subscribe to my channel for more see you in the next one